Hello and welcome back to Archimel Designs. In my previous video we talked about tips and tricks for making money selling chainmail jewelry. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite ways to finish off chainmail jewelry using crimp beads. And you can buy crimp beads, they're usually cast, and they're not bad, they do the job. But occasionally even buying the same sizes, they, they just don't fit right or they don't fit the project that you're working on. And so what I started doing is using rings to make my own crimp beads, so to speak. To make this particular necklace, what I used 16 gauge wire to make my rings on the left hand side that we'll be using as the crimp beads. And the leather cord is 2 millimeters. So I went with a, I believe, 3.5 millimeter inside diameter on those, which obviously isn't enough to fit the cord through there twice. Later on in the steps, we'll make them into ovals and then it'll work anything larger than that and it starts spreading out and looking weird which is one thing that I don't like about the crimp beads that you buy it's very difficult to get ones that end up looking right they usually end up looking a little wider than your piece and that goes into a lot of things how much material was used and it's not just the whole size that like the starting hole size doesn't always determine how it's going to look at the end so that's another reason why I started making these. Anyways, 16 gauge sterling silver wire is what I used there. 3.5 millimeter inside diameter. Then a couple short pieces of chain mail. Obviously the leather cord. Pendant usually works best on these because the stiffer leather cords need a little bit of weight to pull on them. And then you'll need some other jump rings and a clasp to finish off the project. Let's get started. First step is soldering the rings. And you don't have to have a really nice torch or anything to do this. The white stuff you saw me dabbing on there with a paintbrush is boric acid powder dissolved in denatured alcohol. And then you just dab it on there and light it on fire. The alcohol burns off, leaving the boric acid powder, reduces the amount of fire scale and cleanup on the rings dramatically. And of course, flux the joints of the rings. I tuck the solder chips under the rings right under the joint. I think it makes it easier um, than trying to balance it on top, especially when you're doing a large group of them like this. And the solder always flows towards the energy, so it's going to come up towards the heat being put into the rings there. So. You don't need an anvil or anything crazy for doing this. Any hard surface and a hitting device is going to get you to where you need to be for this step. Because all we're doing is turning the rings into ovals so that the cord can be passed through there twice. One tip here is to keep the solder joint on top. It's much less likely to crack and open on you during the setting process. And we just repeat the steps for all the rings here. This is one of the things I didn't actually think of when I was first doing this project. I was planning on uploading this video within a couple of days of the last one, but our son was on his Christmas break, and I just couldn't hardly get much of anything done as far as working on the computer, because he was on it a lot. I wanted to use three rings instead of the two on each crimp bead point, and I wasn't really able to hold it with the plier, so of course it came to me that I should solder them together, which I probably should have done for all the others, but I didn't think of it at the time. So now you have the advantage of my hindsight and can learn from my mistakes too. And then back at the hitty bouncy thing, get our cords to about the same length, hammer the crimp beads down onto the leather cord. You don't need to mash it on there too much, just enough that the cord isn't going to pull out. If you hammer it on there too much, you might actually cut into the leather and weaken the bond, so it's probably best to just tap it on there into place. Once we get all of them together, and we've got the finished project. I'm sorry, the 
photo was terrible. My shop lights are great for working, give me tons of light, but they're really terrible for taking pictures. I have to usually turn them off and set up a little studio to get good photos, but it gives you an idea of what the piece looks like. Finished.